Greetings, Earth enthusiasts. If you ever wondered about the incredible perspectives our planet has to offer from high above here in the right place, I am Dr. Clive Kutsi, and I'm thrilled to be your guide on this captivating journey into the world of remote sensing. Welcome. And please remember to like, subscribe to, and share this video. Thank you. Continuing with our use of the nighttime light uh, data sets, we're going to add some animation to our images. In particular, we're going to add a thumbnail and we're going to uh, do a video. Now, this add another dimension, call it a third dimension to the work that we've done so far. Um, and it brings what we've done basically alive. It, it, you can visually present it, I think, in a much better way or much more appealing way. So um, we've looked at the last video of generating a fitted value. Um, that's basically a linear value of our nighttime lights for any specific location uh, based on the number of, of, of images, etc., etc. Um, so in this particular um, video tutorial, we're going to, um, as I said, look at animation. So again, you go to your Earth Engine, go to Platform, you go to Code Editor, once the code editor is open, you go to script, you go to the catalog here, you go down, you scroll down until you find your script, your uh, saved script of your project. As I said, you double click on it and it will open. As I said repeatedly now, every time, run and save. Your first port of call should be to run and to save. Okay, so I'm not going to go through all the script. Let me scroll down down to um, the animation part. Um, okay, so um, create a thumbnail and add it to the map, which is this thing here to the right. This is what we call a thumbnail. Okay, so this is what we're going to create. So the first thing that we have to do is we want to create our region of interest. We want to create a rectangle uh, or a, a geometry. Um, so in order to do that, um, we basically use um, the drawing rectangle function here on the left hand side of, of, of the map. Okay, so you basically click on that and it will give you the option to draw a, a rectangle. And basically you just position your cursor any place on the map, but make sure that um, you will be able to cover your entire region of interest. So I'm going to do it left click there, then I'm going to draw it to the bottom, and you're going to take it to the right, and you're going to left click again, and there's your rectangle. Okay, so that will be the thumbnail, as you see, that will be the, 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 the size or the the um, area of your um, thumbnail. Okay, so if you want to delete it, you basically just exit. Um, and um, you can then, you see, it's located here at the top, and you basically just delete it there, and it's gone. If you, for whatever reason, um, want to redraw it, or whatever, so just say it again. You're going to click on this function here, draw a rectangle. Um, you're going to position your cursor somewhere um, to, uh, around your region of interest um, and you're going to left click and you keep your left click in um, and you're just basically going to move it um, so that you can see I'm a little bit too far to the left. So what I want to do is I want to um, bring it closer to um, the left hand side. So let me... Um, let, uh, let me delete this one again, um, delete it, and I'm going to go closer. Uh, and it's basically, uh, sorry, um, come on. Um, let's delete it again. Basically trial and error in terms of getting it uh, to the point where it um, fits. Uh, well, there we go. That looks like a better um, uh, um, a rectangle. You don't want it to have lots of open space. You want to have it as close as possible to your region of interest. So once you're happy with that, you can just exit here. And your um, 
geometry, your region of interest is, is saved here. Now, to get to its coordinates, um, it, you basically click on this little triangle and you go to the coordinates. And there's the coordinates. Now, we need to, within our code, have the top left coordinate and the bottom right coordinate, or the top right or the bottom left diagonal. But you need those two sets of coordinates. Okay, so you can, let's say, choose one and three, because that would be diagonally opposite. Okay, one and three or two and four. So you basically just copy and paste that specific code um, into our, um, uh, or the coordinates into our code, and there they are. So, so the 19.83 minus 3 is the top left, and the 17 and the 19 is the top right. That's the two that I've chosen. Where do I get it? As I said, you get that uh, coordinates from the top here. Okay, there they are. Um, and you just simply copy and paste them um, from um, the coordinates as they are listed within, uh, yeah, where they are listed here. Okay, so once you've, um, you can keep, um, the, 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 the rectangle here, but I typically just delete it because I'm only interested in the coordinates. I'm not interested in, in, the, in, the, in the actual triangle itself, the rectangle itself. I'm only interested in the coordinates. So I've generated my, um, my let's call it thumbnail area. I recovered the, the top left hand and bottom right hand coordinates. And I've added that into my 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 script, um, and I give it a name. And in my case, I'm just call it rec R E C T for rectangle. The D O T is false, meaning um, use the C the cent uh, central uh, coordinate system of the map itself. Now, um, you can you can add that rectangle um, if you want to using that code, and you can center your map, but I'm not going to do this because I've already have a center and I already have a, a region of interest. I'm just leaving that code. So if for interest sake, okay, let's so for example, um, uh, activate that piece of code. If we run our code, you'll see that my, um, there's my layer. Um, it will now um, show, let's just unselect all my previous, um, Layers, um, you'll see, there we go. There's my code, which is this variable here that I've, that I've mapped here. Okay, but I said, I'm not interested in showing that. I'm more interested in showing um, or displaying the actual images rather than um, the variable itself. Okay, so remember, uh, you to deactivate the code, you simply just do two forward slashes, and I'm going to rerun the code. Okay, so the code is available if you want to use it, but as I said, I don't, I don't display the rectangle per se, but it is available. So now I've created the area of my thumbnail. Okay, so the next one is the 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 the, the, the data set that I'm going to use, and again I'm going to use my Veers data set. I'm clipping it for my region of interest as normal. And the filter date is from the beginning of the data set to the end of the data set. Again, you can change those dates. And the band I'm going to use is the average set. That's the only band there are. But if there's additional bands, you can, you can add. If you want to add the first image in this uh, image collection to your map, you can do that. Um, by using this particular code, but I'm not going to do this because I already have uh, other images that I'm displaying. But so I'm leaving it for, for if, if it's up to your discretion if you want to do it. So this is just a code um, to display the first image in, in, in this image collection. So that would be the April 2012 image that will be displayed. See, first image. Then um, I'm going to um, basically, um, say what the, the details are of the thumbnail, meaning the content and how I want to display it. Um, so I'm going to say that this, uh, the central reference thing is the EPSG 3857, 
which is in um, uh, which is in meters. Remember, I always try to uh, um, uh, move away from from um, um, decimals and and those sort of distances, um, degrees, distances, and those things. I prefer to work in meters and 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 so forth. Um, so that's the referencing system that I'm going to use. Dimensions, and, and you can use the same one or you can use an alternative. Um, just make sure that it's um, um, locate the referencing system is for your specific area. And you can find that in QGIS, for example. Dimensions, I've used 500. I think 500 is the maximum that you can do. And that's just the, the detail of how much detail do you want in your thumbnail. The higher the value is, the more detail, the lower the value is, the less detail. And again, you can play around with it. That number is up into your discretion. My region is my rectangle. You know, this area that I've just created here on top, remember there the, the variable is my, my, my rectangle area it's called rectangle um, so that will be the region that i'm interested in um, remember the minimum value um, in my um, uh, night lights is one and the maximum is 200 remember again <clears throat> i'm leaving zero out because zero means there's no night lights and i'm not interested in those areas only air interested in areas which uh, recorded some nighttime lights and remember the maximum I've just put is 200 although the, the number can be very different then the palette I've used this particular color scheme or visualization parameters again this is totally up to your discretion play around with it to find out uh, or to determine which um, is visually um, more appealing or better than other palette schemes this is just an expert um, from in my case I'm using this but you don't have to and then frames per second I'm using one but remember you can make it bigger or you, you can make it more or you can make it less so um, let's make it zero let's keep it one for, for now but I can for example make it 0 0.2 I can do that as well so that will be um, uh, five seconds or uh, image will be displayed for five seconds until it changes. Let's make it 0 0.5, for example. Okay. Um, and then, so now I've created the content of my thumbnail. I've created my, my region of, of my rectangle so that I can get the coordinates. I have um, set what image collection and the dates and the time. Now, then I um, indicated the detail regarding um the thumbnail itself the content of the thumbnail um, and then um, this is just where i am positioning the thumbnail so um using the um earth engine function um thumbnail okay so that basically tells the the, the code editor to convert this content into a thumbnail so um, I'm going to use the, the, the image collection. Remember, this is the image collection that I'm going to use. And then I'm going to use my parameters, the content that I've just created on top. So that's important. So I'm taking uh, my images. And I'm using the content, the parameters, and, and I'm creating a thumbnail of that. And then where I'm going to locate it, I'm going to position it in the bottom right, the width, et cetera, et cetera. Again, um, the style, you can give it names, you can do all sorts of things with it, that's up to you. And then uh, I'm going to add this thumbnail to my map, and there it sits. So let's quickly run it again um, and, and see what um, happens. Okay, so I'm going to run it. So the thumbnail, it's now generating the thumbnail, it sits in here. Um, Unfortunately, you cannot really zoom in or zoom out of the thumbnail, so it may be a little bit difficult from uh, the video to actually see, but um, you'll see that, I'll see if I can highlight a specific area and you'll see that um, uh, the night lights will change in a time series format. So if you look at, let's say that specific where my cursor is, you'll see that there's definitely changes happening. Um, again, you can make this a little bit bigger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but yeah, so you can see of each location, um, and this is where the color scheme becomes so important. Um, 
is that uh, to make it visually more appealing. But you can clearly see um, there's movement within that um, thumbnail. And that's basically what it does is it's displaying a nighttime light image every, what did we say, two se every second. Uh, sorry, every two seconds. Because remember, frames per second is a, a frame, half a frame per second, meaning a full frame every two seconds. So every two seconds, it's um, giving a, an, a, an, it's changing on a monthly basis. Remember, nighttime light is monthly. So it will start on April 2012 and it will run through to um, September 2023. So it gives you a visual indication of the change in nighttime light intensity per location for this period of time. So that's quite a neat way of, of, of presenting this. Now, this is a static, and it, oh, not a static, it's dynamic, but it only um, displays in um, uh, the, the engine itself. You cannot export this. Uh, well, let's see if we can down. Yeah, seems like you can download this. Um, and then you can save it. Um, yeah, so that is it's entirely possible. But I don't, I don't um, like to um, download it from the Earth Engine. I prefer to create a video itself. And that will be the focus of the next video tutorial is to generate a uh, video of this thumbnail so that we can just, um, you know, use it in um, any other media player. Um, for presentation purposes or whatever the case might be. So I hope you enjoyed this short little tutorial video on how to create a thumbnail in the Earth Engine of your specific data set over a period of time. And as I said, the beauty of this is it, it gives another dimension to the work that you're doing and it really makes the images comes alive, so to speak. Um, and you know, this can run in the background while you're making a presentation. Play around with the the palettes and play around with the dimensions so that you optimize the thumbnail itself. Thank you um, for watching this tutorial and thanks for joining me on this uh, journey into remote sensing. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I said you're welcome to pop me an email if you need the code or if you uh, interested in something else, and um, I'll see you on the other side.